The White Bear Area Chamber of Commerce and SCC TV are proud to present Your Business Matters, dedicated to your business needs. The White Bear Area Chamber is a nonprofit business organization serving as advocates to the White Bear Area and its business community. Now, here's the Executive Director of the White Bear Area Chamber and the host of Your Business Matters, Tom Snell. Welcome to Your Business Matters, brought to you by the White Bear Area Chamber of Commerce. Each month, we interview community leaders and local business owners so you can be informed about the developments in our community. This month, I'm pleased to welcome Scott Randall, an instructor at Century College in their Solar Career Degree Program and Workforce Training. This Career Pathways Program has been an enormous success in training our future workers for an exciting career in the renewable energy section. Thank you so much for joining us today on Your Business Matters, Scott. It's my pleasure to be here. Yeah. I wanted to ask you some questions, first of all, about um, the solar energy program at Century College. Uh, when was it founded? Uh, I believe it was around 2008. Uh, oh, okay. I, I wasn't there personally, but yeah. um, it was around 2008. We started out with a solar hot water program primarily. Okay. And eventually it grew into solar PV because the electricity sector has grown tremendously. Solar TV? PV, oh. which is photovoltaics oh, okay. and electric, All right. electric okay. production. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that has been primarily due to the cost of solar dropping about tenfold. Tenfold? Yeah, so um, in 19, or excuse me, in 2010, when I installed solar on my home, I paid roughly $4 a watt for solar panels. Now we're paying yeah. around 40 cents, so it's... That uh, much? Yeah, so it's, 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 it's com that, that would make it competitive, like with coal and some of the other energy sources? Yeah, actually, actually it's cheaper than, than coal or even competitive with natural gas now, so... We'll see a lot more of wow. solar just because of okay. that, and wind also. Yeah, so I would assume then that uh, Century College's program then has grown since it started in the uh, oh, yeah. mid part of the 2000s. Sure. Okay. What are um, what are some of the uh, areas that students can train for in the uh, solar program at Century? Uh, we have um, three or four main certificates that we offer. Um, we have a, a solar installation certificate, okay. which is a, a site assessment installation. So we go out and, and learn about the sites and which sites would make good solar applications. Mm -hmm. um, we have a solar sales certificate for people who want to sell solar. Oh, we have okay. a solar heating and thermal certificate. And we have a, a two-year AAS degree that we've uh, set up and partnered with Excel Energy on um, that actually... Um, is more intended to get people out into maybe power plants and that kind of thing working for Excel Energy. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So uh, when you talk about the solar uh, sales part that you mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, then just how do, you, how do you train a student or a person that's going into that to go into a house or a building? And one of the first questions they're going to be asked is, is this going to save me money? I mean, people also want to help, uh, you know, with the uh, environmental standards, but they also want to save money. And so somebody might say, okay, how much money can you save me in my home? Well, the salespeople have the ability to answer that type of a question. Sure, that's probably foremost in everybody's mind that yeah. they, they, they want to know. Sure, everybody's interested in the environment, but they don't want to make the move until it's going to save them some money, right? So uh, really... Our students, that's the first thing we teach them is first about how solar works yeah. and then uh, how, it, how it can help the, the customer financially. Mm -hmm. And every, every single system that we work on, um, we do a financial analysis on so that they're, they're able to do that just in their sleep virtually. So um, it's, it's something that's going to definitely be part of the education. So does uh, somebody that might want to go into solar sales, let's say, mm -hmm. uh, we'll, we'll pick the other parts apart too, but mm -hmm. somebody that wants to go into solar sales area, do they have to have a strong math background? Um, it's, it's not terribly strong. Uh, when, when, when we bring students into the solar program, uh, 
Uh -huh. um, there's, there's certificate levels and there's, there's uh, wage levels that are involved and we want to get, they want to get out working as quickly as possible. So, so those programs and certificates are, mm -hmm. um, they're, they're designed to get people out working quickly. And because of that, we don't have time to go through a lot of math, but math is part of it, and and so is the the computer software part of it. And oh, so, okay. So you're going you're to be getting into um, uh, like Excel spreadsheets and that kind of thing. Okay, so it would be basically Excel that you'd have to know some uh, rudimentary Excel program. Definitely Excel, and then and some of the other um, industry related software packages. Okay. Too. Now let's go through and, and talk about wages a little bit too, okay. because that's important for people. Sure. Uh, but before I go into that, I wanted to find out, is there a shortage in this industry? Do, do they need people to come in and work in so or is it high, are the jobs highly competitive? Uh, there is a shortage, definitely. We never have enough students to fill the job openings that are available. Wow. So that's, that's one of the things that even in industry or in all of the state right now, right. it's it's hard to find good workers, enough workers to fill yeah. the positions. But especially in the solar industry, we're growing like crazy. Um, we had a forty percent, forty eight percent increase in jobs last year in twenty seven. Forty eight percent. Yes, it, it's uh, growing tremendously, and because of that, we're always having a, a shortage of prospective employees. But that that helps the the students have a better choice of where they want to sure, go. Sure, sure. Now wages. Uh, what 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 can a person expect to make if they're a solar installer? When we have these short-term certificates, our main main goal is to try to get the the student out as quickly as possible to be working, and it's a step up um, from what they were hopefully making earlier uh -huh. before school, and then when they graduate, they'll they'll get a step up. So generally speaking. We say fifteen to twenty-five dollars an hour for a solar, solar installer, so that's twenty-five or twenty dollars an hour on average. And I've seen many of those recently in that that salary range. And then for the AAS degree, which is a a more advanced two-year uh -huh. degree, um, they can be anywhere from upper twenties to lower thirties. Okay. So, and dollars an hour. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's those pretty are good. Those real wages. strong middle-class wages. Yeah, they are. They're good. Yeah. So when you talk about somebody that gets a certificate, they, let's say somebody wants to get a job as a solar installer, they finish high school or whatever, and they want to get into that, uh, the certificate, how long does it take? Actually, this semester, this fall, I've just uh, set up my fall schedule, and we're doing a full 16-credit solar certificate, which can be completed in one semester, and that's um, four and a half months. So you'd be starting wow. in September and ending in December, and you would be uh, have the full certificate completed then. Wow. So that's amazing. Wow, yeah, it yeah. really is. Now, are there options for students that might want to take this even beyond the, uh, pro the programs that Century College offers? I mean, is there anything uh, that can connect a student to maybe uh, options that are offered at the at the U or at Metro State? Are there is there anything like this, or does it stop after uh, two years at the most? Um, our two-year certificate is actually set up to as a two plus two program with Bemidji State so, oh, okay. so we can um, continue with another two years into an applied engineering or that kind of uh, program up at Bemidji State. Um, as far as the U, we don't have anything particularly okay. set up but a lot of the credits that they do take are are generals through the Minnesota State system, so they would definitely transfer. But you do have a two plus two program with this with Bemidji State, yeah. though, yep. which is a four-year state college. Yes. So if a student wanted to, have you had students that have gone that route? Um, we just set it up this last semester, so I'm, in fact, it's been still in the process of being oh, okay. completed. Okay. All right. So uh, we have one student that's interested in doing that right now, but oh, okay. um, I'm sure in the future that uh, it could be more yeah. popular. So what would a, a student that would go through the 2 plus 2 program, what would they end up doing then? What, when you say like uh, engineering, what, what does that mean in the solar industry? Um, a, applied engineering, so, so maybe they yeah. get into project management type of position. Okay. Or they, they may uh, work in designing uh, systems that improve the asset management type of, sure. of work. Sure. Yeah. Now... What would the what is the typical is there such a thing as a typical student that no. goes into this? 
No, we get students from all realms. We have uh, students that have have absolutely no knowledge of of solar or anything, and they just think it's interesting, so they they hop on board and absolutely love it. I've had students that have have come out of prison, and have turned out to be the absolute finest students in the really okay. in, in the industry. I have a number of students who are, have doctorates going through the program. So. And they all range from anywhere from high school all the way to 70 years old going through school. So, Whoa, and so you've got even I, some, se uh, some senior uh, that have decided to go into this field. Yep, I have, uh, this semester I have two 60-some-year-old people who are going to go into solar sales. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that sounds like a really interesting uh, venue. And I would imagine you can make quite a bit of money in the solar sales field if you're good. It? It's all dependent upon how good you are. So, yep, yep. so uh, we talked about students applying for jobs in the uh, solar industry and the typical. Uh, we also talked about some of the uh, other other programs that, that, that you have with the solar program, the different areas, and we, 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 we reached out on that a little bit. I uh, also wanted to talk about uh, the relationship that you might have with the uh, state of Minnesota. Uh, have you gotten any, uh, is, is there any involvement with the state as far as seeing this as a potential job opportunity for people in our area? Uh, and has there been any funding from any of the local legislators or from any bonding that you're aware of? Uh, we have we have all of those things. Um, we had a new solar lab just built um, last year at the college uh, through yeah. bond through bonding. Um, we have we work with the Department of Commerce uh, on a lot sure. of our education things. We have yeah. um, all kinds of relationships with the state. We're part of the Minnesota uh, Energy Center for Excellence, which works with Excel Energy. Minnesota Center for Energy Excellence. Yes. Tell me a little bit about that, and I, uh, what is that? Um, they try to educate the public and students anywhere from uh, elementary all the way up through college level students about energy as a career. And oh. um, so a lot of those students that we end up talking to end up coming into the energy industry through that program. We also go around and teach high school instructors over the summertime and that helps um, them uh, introduce energy programs into their classrooms. So if they want to do like a career pathways venue then they have an opportunity to let the students uh, know about that so that they can uh, look at Century College as an opportunity to to go in that direction. Exactly. Yeah. Well, it seems like the college is a real leader in the uh, solar energy field. We are. We're one of the, the few opportunities for solar in the state right now in terms of education. Really? Yeah. There's oh. not many solar programs out there, and we're, we're happy to be one of the, the ones who jumped on board early to, to, yes. to lead the industry. Yep. Now, uh, you talked about uh, this being such a burgeoning industry. So, first of all, do you have any, do you work with any uh, private sector partners in this or utility companies? Sure. Uh, we have a partnership with Excel. Um, that's also through the Minnesota Energy Center of Excellence. Um, but we, we help develop, or Excel has helped us develop both uh, program structures and uh, job opportunities. We work with them on a regular basis, and uh, it's, it's a great opportunity to to work together with Excel. Right now we're doing a, a grant uh, project through Excel to study the effects of, of soiling on a solar panel system that they have gave us the money for to install at Century College. Um, there's there's all kinds of things that Excel does for us and, uh -huh. and to, to help us with our program. Now uh, you now this grant again uh, what is the what is really the purpose of it? So it's a renewal, renewable development fund grant that is issued to Century, to uh -huh. ac actually is inter, issued to uh, Minnesota State, yeah. and they issued it to us in order to study the effects of soiling on solar panels, which is basically snow cover in the winter time. Uh -huh. So how does that affect the production of oh, solar? Oh, okay. 
and right now we're in the midst we're, of we're not we're not Phoenix Arizona we're in right. sunny 350 right. so days of the year we're in the midst of uh, working on that study in these last few weeks with snow on the solar panels it's it's really been a an interesting results that, so that we're seeing that can have an effect on the oh, uh, yes. energy that yeah. get the snow on it and, yep yeah yep. we're looking for ways to mitigate that oh okay well that's uh, that's interesting so you do work with Excel yeah and you mentioned about the burgeoning opportunities that that students have when they uh, when they leave your program. Uh, what are some of the uh, what are some of the companies or job opportunities that await them? Do you have any idea about maybe some businesses that have installed solar uh, panels or that have used uh, your students for uh, where they where they might work? Sure. There's there's so many. There's when I started in solar, there was probably half a dozen solar companies in Minnesota. There might be a hundred of them now. A hundred. And they they all our students go to all of them. I shouldn't say all of them, but many of them. And for instance, All Energy is a popular solar company. Many of our students have gone to All Energy. Um, we have some that have gone to uh, True North Solar, uh, IPS Solar, uh, Blue Horizon Solar. Um, some of the ones have gone to XL Energy or. Um, some of uh -huh. the other utilities as well. So there's a lot of companies out wow. there, and they're they're all doing very very well. That's really uh, that's really impressive. Uh, now the uh, the program that that you've got, and do you have almost a, a hundred percent of the students that I would imagine go on to uh, to jobs then? Yeah. So <clears throat> most of the students, everyone that wants a job that I'm aware of, can find a job. Uh -huh. uh, some of them take a little bit longer to find them, but almost all the time they're they're waiting out the door just to, to be employed. So I mean that is really incredible when you think about it. It's just like a, a semester program and somebody mm -hmm. can go into a, a middle class job. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. It's a great opportunity for uh, those who are uh, experiencing low wages right now. Yeah. Now, uh, when we talk about uh, the students that go into the uh, program, do you get a lot of uh, students that show interest in the uh, White Bear area or in the Northeast Metro? Sure. Um, the, the thing that I find, and I always encourage people to go out and, and see the world, but most of the students actually like to stay here, um, usually because of family uh, or because they're, they're just used to the area and like it. Yeah. So you get a lot of students like from White Bear High School that, that might show interest or from uh, Montemidi or North St. Paul or... Yeah, they're from around the area, not necessarily yeah. all White Bear Lake, but they're, uh -huh. they're from around the area, yeah. And uh, do you, do you uh, work with the local schools and does this program work? You mentioned that you do programs with, with teachers, mm -hmm. uh, maybe in the high school during the summertime or other periods. Uh, explain that a little bit more and how that affects uh, maybe some of the classroom curriculum that they might have. In high school? Yes. So, so basically we go out and, uh, for instance, we went to Irondale High School and we taught their instructors um, on, on energy uh, concepts and how careers might uh, yep. expand into the energy field. Um, with, along with that, we ended up setting up a couple of programs at, at Iron High, Irondale High School. They, they uh, are installing. They actually started a solar program of their own this last year. Oh, and, okay. And uh, we hope to, and we have a curriculum uh, arrangement set up so that they can come into the college now and um, not have to take the full curriculum. They can okay. um, get by with or, or start with some of the stuff that they have already had. Um, we, in other colleges or other high schools that we've gone to, the, the high school instructors have actually set up energy curriculum programs within the high school, and that's part of their um, science classes now. Well, that's really, uh, really impressive. Yeah. So if somebody is interested in finding out more about the, uh, this option that's offered at Century College, how would they go about uh, doing that? Um, I, if it were me, I would call the uh, um, the main college office and ask for uh, admissions office, I guess, and, and ask for some information on solar energy, uh -huh. or they can or they can contact uh, me me directly. Okay. Um, I don't know if you can give my number out here. Absolutely. Uh, my number is three two zero two five nine four eight nine three, and that's actually my cell number. I give that out to everybody. So. 
Okay. Uh, hopefully I won't get inundated at midnight after this. Okay. Well, thank you so much for uh, joining me today. I appreciate it very much. All right. Much. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, now for a quick announcement about important chamber and community happenings. Scheduled on February 20th, the White Bear Area Chamber will host a breakfast meeting with United States Senator Tina Smith at Short Elliott Hendrickson, located at 3535 Badness Center Drive. Uh, the program will run from 8 to 9 a.m. in the morning, and there'll be a uh, breakfast served. People interested in attending this should register on the Chamber website. Then on March 1st, at a location to be determined, the Chamber will host another breakfast meeting with Nora Solvik, the new chair of the Metropolitan Council. That program again will happen from 8 to 9 a.m. and the focus will be on local transit issues. Both of these events are free to attend and again, a continental breakfast will be served. For more information, visit our website, www whitebearchamber.com. I'm Tom Snell. Thanks for watching our program today. You've been watching Your Business Matters. For more information on this program or the White Bear Area Chamber, visit whitebearchamber.com or call 651-429-8595.